good evening everyone my name is brijender singh and this is a small discussion that we are having uh, because the result for the prelims came out earlier than expected and a lot of uh, people have this common query it just came out on monday a lot of people have this common query that i have studied very hard all year long but i was not able to give adequate time to the essay preparation i was told that if you are reading your newspapers if you are preparing for your optional if you are studying different subjects then i will be you know your essay will take care of itself but now that i have actually cleared the prelims and now that i am actually writing the mains uh, when i have looked at the previous year's essay topics i am not really sure what i am supposed to write over there and they have this what should i call it a specific fear of the philosophical essays of the abstract essays so here students are saying at this stage now what can we do the essay paper of course everyone knows is a very scoring paper it's a game changer it makes all the difference between a student who does well in the mains and who is not able to do well in the mains if you look at students who get a good rank in the top 10 in the top 50 usually the essay paper is one paper where they are able to score exceptionally well so today's session the small interaction brief interaction we'll have i'll take up your questions any queries that you have after some time but if i'm uh, sitting for the mains this year what exactly should i do to ensure that i get a good score for myself yes good evening i can notice all of you over here uh but let me just get on with this three things that i'll focus on if you are sitting for the mains this year please listen carefully to the do's and the don'ts what you should be doing and what you should not be doing what are the areas that you should focus on and what are the areas you should not get you should not digress towards on the other hand if you are not writing the mains this year if many students in fact are saying that we are missing the cutoff by a slim margin we don't know what the cutoff is it is expected to be in the mid 80s so students are saying that i'm getting maybe 81 to 1 mark sheet i'm getting 86 from another uh, answer key i am missing it by a thin margin another category of students are saying that we are not clearing the the prelims this year maybe because of the csat paper gs i'm quite confident that i'm getting 90 plus i should be able to clear the score but csat i think i have not even got the 66 that was required now to understand that three things that i'll focus on the basics of the essay paper what exactly are the do's and don'ts that you that you should keep in mind second the one topic of contention for most students uh, handling reflective essays abstract essays and th third then a little bit of information about the essay module that we have here at wajiram let me start first by getting your orientation right to do well in the essay paper there are some common misconceptions that you should get rid of and there are some common thoughts that you should get very clearly in your mind to understand the mistakes that some people make many students in fact make are these first two points many students are under the misconception that essay writing is an art go to any website type essay on google pick up a book usually they will begin with this one common phrase one common uh, uh, statement that essay writing is an art essay writing rewards your creativity the more creative you are the easier it becomes for you to write good essays this to an extent i would agree is correct unfortunately it is correct for those people who are writing the essay for some other purpose if there's a student who is studying let's say in delhi university right now if there's a student who is studying in oxford right now if there's a student who is uh, writing in a literature course yes for them essay writing is an art and essay writing will test your creativity on the other hand the students preparing for the civil services exam in this examination it is not it is not an art it is a very clinical exercise if i look at your mains you have two optional papers that you have to write you have four gs papers that you have to write and then finally there is this one essay paper in a period of 3 months in fact exactly 3 months from today start the mains in this period of 3 months i have just about enough time to revise my basics to practice a little bit of answer writing to add some value to my preparation and then sit for the mains when i go there i am not trying to be artistic i have just one simple intention that when i write the paper i should be able to score good marks and what are good marks in the essay paper even in the worst of years your target should be 125 plus there are some years where the score is exceptionally high students get 145 155 162 also 
and there are certain years where a lot of students will get somewhere between 95 to 110. But on average, a score of 125 would be a good score to expect. We, we are not dealing with it as an art. You should deal with it as a clinical exercise that when I go in, there are certain elements that I'm looking for, certain, you know, certain notions that I have in my mind. How will I understand the topic? How will I organize my content? How will I brainstorm? And once I start writing, how will I ensure that it gets a good flow? How you do that? In a little time, I'll explain to you. Second, lot of people, again, have this, make this mistake that the essay is about creativity. It is not creativity that we're looking at. What the UPSC actually checks and rewards is diversity in your content. To help you understand this, let me take a simple example. Let's say I give you a topic which says health. Sorry, not health, rather wealth. Is of no use without health. And again, understand why we say it is not an art, it's a clinical exercise and why creativity is not the concern, diversity is important. If you look at a student who has not even given their prelims, a student who started pre preparing for the civil services exam this year, this student will also write, what will they write? That without good health, you cannot enjoy your wealth. And the statement is absolutely right. If they have to give an example for this, what example will uh, will they write? Example that they will give over here is, for example, Rakesh Junjunwala. They will say that he earned a lot of money, thousands of crores. He was a leader for the rest of the world as far as financial markets were concerned. And yet he was also a person who complained towards the end of his life that with all the wealth that he had, uh, that he had earned, he was not able to enjoy it because he did not have good wealth. Some students will stop over here. But when they stop over here, how much will they get? In an essay, which is out of 125 marks, they will get a score which is roughly around 40. Then there's a second category of students. These students will go one step forward. For example, students who have cleared the prelims and who are writing their mails. They will add a second dimension over here. They will say that without good health, you cannot even earn wealth. They will say unless you have good human capital, unless a person is good, is sound physically and mentally, Earning money becomes very difficult. Now that again is correct. These students will increase their score. They will go to a score which is slightly above 50. Third category of students are those people who will go to a third level. And this now usually is the students who are able to get a score of 120, 130. These students will say that without wealth, you cannot even ensure good health. Whether you are an individual, whether you are an organization, whether you are the entire country, if you want to ensure good health for your people, you will have to have more and more, uh, you will have to have more and more wealth. The country will have to invest more in healthcare in India. For example, before 2021, before the COVID pandemic, India was spending 1.3% of its GDP on healthcare. Even after the pandemic, we are able to spend only 2.1%. What does that indicate? Again, that without wealth, we cannot even ensure health. We are not talking about creativity over here. It's a simple clinical exercise. Interpret the topic correctly. After you interpret it, forget about the creativity, explain the different dimensions. The essay starts taking shape. Another misconception that students have, yes, good evening. Another misconception that people have is that it is a specialist exercise. People believe that, you know, uh, if I have technical jargon, if I have a lot of technical information, that will help me in this paper. That will enable me to write a good essay. In fact, this is the common misconception that many students have and many people spread also that optional papers, are, certain optional papers are very helpful in the essay paper. Uh, last few years, in fact, since about 2019, abstract essays, philosophical essays have, have become very common in this paper. So students very naturally will say that if I have philosophy as an option, will that be an advantage for me? Please understand on a very simple level, especially for students who are writing the mains, an optional paper will not necessarily help you in essays. Number one, because it is a generalist exercise. And number two, because you're not writing an answer, you're writing an essay. What I was saying earlier also, this paper demands diversity in their content. A couple of years back, there was this one essay topic 
that the real is rational and the rational is real. Now you ask a student of philosophy, where is the statement coming from? And they will say that the statement is attributed to Hegel. That is, of course, absolutely correct. Question is now, if I have studied Hegel, whether I did it in political science, whether I did it in philosophy, can I use him to write a 1200 word long essay? I cannot keep writing the same thing over and over again. I cannot explain his thoughts. I may have to look at the same topic from diverse perspectives, from different dimensions. And for that diversity, it is not an optional paper that helps you. It is again the diversity in the content from different sources. Yes, one thing I'll admit over here, in the essay paper, ethics will help you. GS paper number four, the ethics paper, that will have a correlation with your philosophical topics. You're good in essay writing, it helps you in ethics. You're good in ethics, it'll help you in the essay, but not necessarily optionals. Someone is saying great people, yes. I think uh, I've got about, I think about seven, eight, ten comments I can see over here. The people are saying only great people. Great people, listen, listen. If you're writing your mains this year, honestly listen and honestly do well. Fourth, uh, yes, this is again the common misconception. Students say that, sir, if I'm reading the newspaper regularly, if I'm making notes, if I'm studying GS well, will I be able to write good essays? Unfortunately, the answer is not yes. Newspapers, uh, GS studies, the books that you read, they will give you a lot of content. Problem is that most of this content is not usable. It's not that it is not relevant. It is not that it is not good. Problem is that unless and until this content is written down and noted in an organized manner, it will not be of much use to you. Sitting in the exam hall with the pressure of time on me, first day of my mains, first paper that is happening, it is not always possible to remember all the content that I've read, all the articles that I've read. Unless and until it is collected, unless and until it is organized in a systematic manner, you will not be able to do well in it. Four misconceptions, please get out of your mind. And again, just one word that you'll keep, that when you are sitting for the examination, you are not here just to write a good essay. You're here to write an essay that actually gets you marks. There's someone here from Pakistan also. Very nice. I welcome you here. So, first get your basics right. Second, in the essay paper now, specifically with regard to the uh, to the UPSC, these are the directions the UPSC gives, which I'm sure you people must have seen. Candidates are expected to keep closely to the subject of the paper. They're expected to arrange their ideas in an orderly manner. And it says that credit will be given for exact and effective, uh, effective uh, expression. Each of these three things that they're writing, sir, I'm preparing for 2024. When should I start writing essays? Hold on. Just hold on for some time. First, understand what you're supposed to be doing. You'll start understanding and how you're supposed to do it. That also. Someone is saying today itself, <laughs> hold on a little. You're getting a little too enthusiastic. Now, when we say keep closely, when the UPSC says keep closely to the subject, what does this mean? Focus on the topic. Do not digress, uh, digress on the topic. And as frequently as possible in your essay, reinforce that topic. Uh, how do you reinforce a topic? A simple tip that I give to the students, especially for the introduction and for the conclusion, is that whatever you're writing in the introduction or the conclusion, the last sentence of the paragraph, last sentence of the paragraph, please use the topic as the last sentence. Whatever the topic may say, you've written something at the end say, and this proves or this shows or this illustrates that the real is rational and the rational is real. What are you doing? You are number one, focusing on the topic. It compels you to address the topic directly. And number two, for the examiner, you're simplifying it for him by reinforcing it again and again. The higher your reinforcement, the better usually is the takeaway for the reader or for the examiner. When we say that you should arrange your ideas in an effective, in an orderly manner, two things that we expect from you, diversity, which is what I was saying to you earlier. We are, we are looking not for creativity, but diversity in your content. Any topic that we're giving you, how many perspectives, how many dimensions can you look at that perspective from? Can you look at that topic from? And number two, when you're writing, there should be connections between your paragraphs. There should be a flow in your paragraphs. Let me again take a small example. What do you mean by diversity and what do you mean by flow? Let's say we take a simple example that women are born 
free but are forever in chains women are born free but are forever in chains now for a topic like this i need diversity and i need flow now let me start with the flow first i want to write an essay that has a logical sequence that has a systematic order so what will i write over here simple way there many ways one way that i can do it is that in the first paragraph after the introduction when i am writing the essay i will start with women even before they are born how do i show that they are in chains now this becomes female feticide or female infanticide number 2 then i go forward and i talk about the girl when she is a small child when she is an infant now what is the problem now the problem is number 1 a lack of education number 2 a struggle to get nutrition compared to their male counterparts the brother will get will get the food very easily the brother will get nutrition very easily but the sister might not always get it number 3 household chores domestic household chores will usually be assigned to girls rather than to boys now third now she is an infant now she becomes let's say a child we are looking at let's say the age between 5 to 10 if school has to be skipped to do something at home the girl will be asked to make the sacrifice if there are elderly parents grandparents or small children in the house the girl will be expected to take care of them what is this this is your patriarchal society then we go forward she becomes a little older and now she becomes a teenager when she is a teenager she will face a lot of restrictions on her day to day movements on what she can do what she cannot do a boy who wants to go for math tuitions at let's say 8:30 at night parents will say go there and they will be very proud that our son is studying very hard he is trying to make a career if the girl tries to go out they will say that it is your safety that is at stake now here i am not really sure whether serious crimes will happen but something as simple as grouping what is grouping inappropriate touching something something as simple as grouping will again put the woman in chain she will have to be very careful about where she is going who she is with what she is wearing and what the time of the day is now let's assume she completes her education and now number 5 let's say she starts working when she starts working now what is the problem now the problem is sexual harassment at the workplace now the problem is a glass ceiling that beyond a certain level a woman will not be able to rise merely because of her gender number 6 tomorrow let's say she gets married in her marital home in a domestic home now what is the problem domestic violence the demand for uh, for uh, for dowry unreasonable demands made by her husband or even by her in-laws and number 7 of course for any woman in india unfortunately today whether it is a small infant or whether it is an elderly lady the problem for them always is that they are never free from crimes now when i'm writing an essay like this what have we done there's nothing difficult i've written everything is very straight forward but in a clear logical flow and as we start adding diversity where does the diversity come from from the different dimensions that that we are discussing when we are discussing for example work here i could tell you that india's women labor force participation rate is declining at a very at a very rapid rate uh, at a very rapid rate if i was talking about uh, people who are children or girls when they are small children i will say that the government admits that most girls have to drop out of school between class 6 and class 8 because the family expects them to come home and take care of domestic responsibilities see the topic here is not my concern the content that we are trying to organize here that is not our concern concern is number 1 there must be diversity number 2 there should be a logical flow you are able to do that and your essay takes shapes and become takes very good shape and it becomes easy to uh, read it becomes good to understand someone has typed a question third time a uh, lot of people say that philosophical essays ke liye times of india you should read spending tree spending tree i think okay fine wala article jo aata hai uh should we read that daily uh someone is saying can you discuss i'll i'll just take a look at your question first let me answer this uh speaking tree i think you're talking about not spending trees uh, speaking tree speaking tree is a very good collection of articles uh if i read a month's worth of times of india 30 articles out of 30 uh, speaking trees i think five or six of them will be very very good will give you very good ideas but again what i was saying earlier 
unless and until these ideas are organized at one particular place place they will not really be usable no matter how many articles i read how much will i remember for example if i talk about women's labor force participation an economic student might have this data might have this data but i'm not sure where will and it comes in the newspapers on a regular basis if i talk about groping if i talk about glass ceiling it comes regularly will you remember it at that point in time it's not about the content that you're reading more importantly is it usable or not just give me a little time let me go to some examples you'll understand this even more clearly over there can we discuss contemporary politics in essays yes you can provided you are not criticizing this is something that is not acceptable you can discuss trends in politics you can discuss trends in politics between the state and the and the center but you should not criticize many students have you know when i check their essays they make sweeping statements what is a sweeping statement politicians are corrupt who has told you that they say that politicians don't care about public welfare who has told you that it has to be more regulated but if it is something that is academic something that is intellectual something that adds value then of course yes you can use politics you can discuss them is there any quotes how many quotes should be used uh, up see there is no such okay since you are asking me this let me just add two points over here someone is asking how many quotes can i use number one of course there is no standard number absolutely no standard number some students may use one quote some may use five quotes some may not use a single quote what matters is does it fit into your writing or not last year in the essay course that i was taking there was some one student what this person used to do was after every paragraph every paragraph this person wrote they would leave a little bit of space and after that they would write a small quotation they were very relevant it's not even that they were wrongly chosen problem was that by the time you reach the third or the fourth or the fifth paragraph it started feeling very monotonous that you know over and over again you're using quotes you forget about the quotes more importantly you focus on your thoughts second thing now so there is no standardized number second thing i would ask you for quotes and this i'll ask you to understand a little carefully please learn to borrow from quotes to borrow from the thoughts of great thinkers great philosophers great leaders to improve your style of writing many students uh, you know the problem is not that they cannot write the problem is they cannot start many students when they write the first paragraph with the first sentence of a paragraph after that the paragraph flows very comfortably then they go on writing they feel very confident the first word the first sentence they struggle with and there a simple tip which i am giving you also is borrow from quotations if you borrow from quotations it becomes very easy for you to start the paragraph and then it starts taking shape so no standardized number and borrow from quotations to add you know to make it easier for you to write can we use some standard diagrams or flow charts no it is the last word given over here it is a test of your expression so if you start making diagrams charts tables then that is not an essay that is an answer that you're writing it's not an essay anymore can similarly someone is asking can i use subheadings no because if you're using subheadings then you don't have the ability to express yourself well that should not be done all right can we add case studies or examples rather than saying case studies rather than saying example let me use a slightly better one evidence whatever thought you are giving whatever thought you are writing in that thought or under that thought there should be something to prove it why why would i listen to you you are one indian or one student out of millions your thoughts your opinion may be completely wrong it should be based on evidence now what is evidence evidence can be what you are saying a case study evidence can be an anecdote evidence can be an example evidence very simply can be some data some figures to substantiate your point to you know to reinforce the point that you're trying to make how to understand essay questions and write the answer first time just hold on that we've not gotten to so far we'll come to that in some time and third of course uh, the upsc says you'll be given credit for effective and exact uh, expression for this now what do you need you need clarity you need depth you need diversity and of course you need good language skills okay let me take your question also side by side is it good to start with a personal anecdote is it good to start with a personal anecdote please don't 
students ask me in fact with reference to your question again let me put it in two manners two forms students say that sir can i write a personal example or a personal experience in an essay second they say can i write what should i call it they say that can i can i given imaginary can i given imaginary quotation or an imaginary example how do people write they say for example that you know ram was going somewhere then someone troubled him and so something happened uh, there was a girl called sita she was working in some office this happened and then they related to the topic giving personal examples giving imaginary examples is useful for those students who have not studied who have not prepared because honestly you don't have an option when you have where is content i have not written the word content here it'll come on some other slide where you have adequate and well organized content you will not need to do anything of the sort if i'm asking you for example that a ship in harbor is safe but that is not what ships are built for in this case of course i have an option i can give a personal example that i was living a very protected life my parents took very good care of me but after a certain point i realized that if i have to grow up or if i have to face the world i must be willing to step outside of my cocoon good that that actually makes sense i can say that with regard to someone else it makes sense but a slightly better student a student who has a little what should i say a little more content has actually collected the content what will the student say this student now will give you a dozen different examples this student for example will say that you can talk about india liberalizing its economy because as long as you stay within that you know that harbor of uh, of protectionism of import substitution your economy will never be able to grow another person will say they can start by saying that unless and until a caterpillar is willing to come out of its cocoon it can never become a butterfly if you have content you don't need to come up with personal examples or you don't need to you know write those hypothetical stories all right uh can we share our essays on your email id for evaluation uh we'll come to all of that later let me first focus on this because many of you are asking questions which are very very evident which are very very common and i assure you you listen to me a little carefully here understand what i'm explaining to you over here these words all your doubts to a large extent will get covered all right let me allow me to move on from here right now now this is what the essay paper demands what are the problems what are the mistakes that students make the mistakes also there could be many but the more common the more frequent mistakes number one is that students don't interpret the topic correctly if your understanding if your interpretation of the topic is correct it can be absolutely fatal a few years back i think it was 2016 there's a topic that had come that if development is not engendered it is endangered now here some students took it to understand what is engender to inculcate to adopt to make it a part of but some students because of the word gender thought that engendered refers only to the female gender and the essay went a little off from there this was further you know compounded by the fact that the statement had been taken from some un report if i remember correctly where they had used it used it specifically in the context of women but like we said earlier also uh you cannot you cannot write an answer you have to write an essay and if your interpretation is wrong high probability you will not be able to do justice similarly i'll take up an example immediately after this which had come last year that history is a set of very a uh, set of victories won by the scientific man over the romantic man does the scientific man always win over the romantic man i i will not give the answer right now i'll give you some minutes to think about it for the moment but if you do not interpret it correctly high probability that your essay will go completely off course when students in a hurry when students are are not willing to invest in giving some time for pre planning pre writing planning then usually they are they are faced with this error second many students digress from the topic the topic is is asking one thing what do they do they don't write about they don't write about the topic or what it is demanding they pick up one or two terms that they are familiar with where they have some content and on that uh, on that topic they start writing whatever they feel like they completely digress you digress from the topic you don't address the topic high probability the examiner will not give you marks which is why earlier i said that as far as possible to avoid this uh, digression please reinforce the topic repeatedly third lack of diversity in their content similarly what i was telling you earlier also 
when students are told and when students are rather taught that optional papers help you, usually you will not have diversity in your content. I am not writing about a subject. I am not writing about political science or philosophy or history. I am writing an essay. So in my essay, yes, one paragraph can be on, on a philosophical dimension. Another paragraph can be on a historical dimension. But another one should be economic. Another one should be technology. One could be about gender. One could be about the environment. You have to have diversity. Otherwise, the essay becomes very repetitive, almost becomes an answer that you're writing. Fourth, yes, one major problem which the students have started asking me online. I'm not answering the question right now. Limited content. Very, very limited content. I knew, know a few quotations. I've got a little bit of material that some friend of mine has handed over to me, but I'm not sure how to use it. And therefore, when I'm writing the essay, I rely excessively, you know, disproportionately on personal opinion. I have very few thoughts to share. I'm largely just sharing my personal opinion. Unfortunately, nobody cares about your personal opinion. And finally, when of course content is limited, you're bound to repeat yourself. Students think that they're changing. See, I completely, what should I say, empathize with you that when there is limited time, being able to think of new ideas, novel ideas in that much time will not be possible. But where you're repeating, of course, the marks also cannot increase. Target over here is not to get uh, last four or five days since the result has come. Many students are also saying that, sir, I had given the mains last year I, and I didn't do very well in essay. I got 102 marks. Another one says I got 98 marks. Another one says I did well. I got 107 marks. See, when you say something like this, you are doing an injustice to yourself because in essay, the score should be at least 125, 130. At least 125, 130. I was looking at the mark sheet this year for the candidates who passed and I realized you also please check between rank 169 and rank, rank 180, the score for 12 candidates is the same, 984 marks. 12 candidates have the exact same score which means every single mark matters. Every single mark matters. So if you are losing out marks in a paper like this, that is criminal injustice on your part. That you cannot do. All right? So these are some common problems. Question more importantly is that now I'll come to the question that you people are typing here. What do I do to write a good essay? What do I do to write a scoring essay? Three things that are needed, just three things. Number one, prepare easy to use content. Prepare content that is, that you know, that is organized, that is put down in a theme specific manner. What do you mean by theme specific? For example, I have some content for women related issues. I have some content on economic issues. I have some content on political issues. I have some content on poverty, education, international relations, security issues and so on. Because when I'm thinking of a particular dimension, that content should be readily available in my mind. Only then can I extract and only then can I use it fruitfully. Now, here comes the question that you people are asking. How do I get this content? There are two options. And honestly, I'll say it as frankly as I can. Number one, this depends upon your hard work. You people have a lot of information preparing for this exam. From different books that you read, magazines that you read, newspapers that you read, you come across a huge amount of information. Problem is, it will take time to organize that information. If you are sitting for the mains next year, you know, if you've not cleared the prelims this year, or if you're still studying for your prelims right now, if you, you, you've just about started your preparation, then please put in that work and start collecting the content yourself. And every now and then, look at the previous year's topics to identify, is your content suitable for the demands? And number two, many students say that, sir, this much work and this much time, I will not be able to invest. If you're not able to do it, then please join a course. It's a conflict of interest if I say that you should join an essay course. You join it anywhere. Don't join it in Baziram necessarily, wherever you want to join. But Please remember, this is a full 250 mark paper and a very scoring paper. It would be, it would be, you know, it would be a very bad feeling if I give my mains and if I don't clear it and I realize that my marks in essay were very low. This paper at least you should be able to do well. So two options you have for content. Either please put in that effort yourself, you have the content, organize it. Or number two, simple option, join a course. Because there at least whoever is, you know, conducting the course, the, uh, the responsibility lies with them. Second, develop time management. How do you develop time management? You know, a lot of students, when you look at, when you check their scripts, 
you can tell that one essay was written in the first part of the exam, another essay was written in the second part. In the essay that they write later, the quality of the essay, the quality of the handwriting, presentation, expression, examples, everything drops drastically because they are running out of time. And here, that's why we say write regularly. Now, here some students are saying, what uh, ethics are you, are you not? I don't know what your question is. But someone is saying, when should we start writing? When do you start writing? If you're writing the mains, then start immediately. Don't waste a single moment. If you're not writing the mains this year, if you're preparing for next year, then please keep at least a weekly or a monthly deadline for yourself. A weekly or a monthly, what should I say, exercise for yourself. That let's say on the 10th of every month, I will write one essay. Or on the on the you know 10th and the 20th of every month, I will write one essay. It's that depends upon you, your level of preparation. But write. But again, when I say writing, students are saying, someone is asking, how do I start writing? I will just say one thing over here. Just write. Don't bother about what you're writing. If you're writing the mains this year, then you'll have to write sensible things. If you are a student who's not writing the mains this year, just write. Biggest problem for students is a block. Is that mental block that when I write an essay, the essay should be very good. You please forget about very good. That will come with time. You just start writing. Some students say that, sir, how do I improve my language? I'm, I'm intelligent. I study very hard and all that. But I'm not able to write well. If you are just reading the newspaper regularly, students say, I'm taking three hours to read the paper. You forget three hours. Every single day, if you spend half an hour reading the newspaper, it is not possible that your language, written and spoken, will not improve. Similarly, for essays, don't bother about what a good essay is, what a bad essay is, what an ideal model essay would be. You start writing, I assure you, in a very short span of time, your language and your, and your expression will definitely improve. Third, improve your writing abilities. How do you improve your writing abilities? That when you write, when you write, after that, please assess your essay and identify your areas of improvement. Now, here students will say, sir, who will assess it for me? How do I assess it? Two options that you have, three options rather. Number one is what we call self-assessment. You write an essay today, put it on the side, write an answer also. You write it today on, uh, let's say, Thursday. You put it on the side, you pick it up on Monday evening. You yourself will be able to identify that there are certain, certain statements that are not looking very good. There are certain examples that are seeming very weak. If you do that, by the next time that you write the essay, you would have learned something. Second option is peer review. Many of you are studying with friends. Many of you know people in your GS classes, optional classes, different classes who are studying with you. Ask them to review your essay. Provided, of course, that your friend, your colleague, your classmate is sensible, is responsible. Third, if you think this is not working for you, then please join a test series somewhere. Please join test, please join an essay module because you will need someone to tell you where you're going wrong, where they can give you detailed and objective feedback. All right, so three things that you can do. Number one, prepare easy to use content, organize content. Number two, develop time management by writing, practicing regularly. And number three, improve your writing abilities. Okay, now let me look at a couple of these questions these people are asking. It's very hard to understand the sentence of the given essay if you're not getting an idea of what the essay is saying. If you don't understand anything, then what do you do? Okay, I'll explain that also. Now, these are some basic tips and pointers. Now, the question that these people are asking, what am I supposed to do? How do I understand correctly? What do I, you know, how do I approach the essay? Now, let me take a look at handling philosophical essays, reflective essays, abstract essays, whatever you want to call it. Now, for these essays, what are you supposed to do? Just five things in this sequence. Number one, interpret the topic correctly. What the last question that I took up from the screen, this was the question, interpret the topic correctly. How? I'll just explain to you in two minutes. Second, identify the important dimensions, the important perspectives that that particular topic demands. Third, ensure there is diversity in your dimensions. Don't keep writing about the same thing again and again. Give our, our add a little more depth to it. Add a little more diversity. Fourth, address and re uh, reinforce the topic. Do not digress from the topic. And number five, as far as possible, select good examples. I say this in the ethics paper also. I say this for the essay paper also. The quality of your answer, the quality of your essay, to a large extent will depend upon the quality of your examples. Why? Because examples make it very easy to understand the point that you're trying to convey. 
Now, with this in mind, let me just take up two topics, brief discussion, what exactly you should do. For example, the topic I was talking about earlier, history is a set of vic uh, victories won by the scientific man over the romantic man. Now, let's assume I'm sitting in the exam hall, exam hall, this is the topic given to me. What am I supposed to do? Number one, interpret the topic correctly. How do you interpret the topic correctly? When you look at the topic, and now I'm not, you know, addressing a webinar, webinar, I'm actually trying to sort of teach you. So here, just pay a little more careful attention. To interpret the topic correctly, break the topic up into different parts. How do we uh, break the uh, topic? History is a series of victories. To some extent, I understand. Won by the scientific man over the romantic man. Telling me that the scientific man is being assumed to be more important than the romantic man. Now, when I, when I spend some time and when I think about it a little, I am not sure whether this topic over here is something that I agree with or that I disagree with. I am not, really, not really sure whether the scientific man actually has won over the romantic man, romantic man has won over the scientific man, or it is impossible to make a choice. So what will I do? I will first interpret the topic correctly by breaking it up into parts. First question, that, and this is my brainstorming. Uh, the length of your essay paper is 3 hours, which is 180 minutes. 90 minutes per essay. Out of 90 minutes, I would advise every student to spend 15 minutes in brainstorming and 75 minutes in writing. Many students literally spend 5 minutes and they start writing. 5-6 minutes, they are in a hurry to write and hurry to finish. Please be not, do not be in a hurry to finish. You are here not to complete the exam, you are here to get marks. Again, I am repeating, the intention is marks. 15 minutes here and 75 minutes here. So when I've got that time for brainstorming, first question that I ask myself is, who is a scientific man and who is a romantic man? Who is a scientific man? A scientific man is someone who is, a, who is logical. A scientific man is someone who is rational. A scientific man is someone who looks for empirical evidence. That is a scientific man. I understand that much. On the other hand, who is a romantic man? Yesterday, not yesterday, I think Sunday, we started with the essay module at Vajiram. I was taking the same topic with those, the same topic with those people also. And I said, can you give me an example of a romantic man? There was a boy sitting there. Some, I think he was, some, I don't know, he's writing his mains this year. He said that, sir, I think Gandhi is very romantic. I said, which Gandhi are you talking about? Mahatma or Rahul? He said, sir, Mahatma Gandhi. Good enough answer. But when he says that Gandhi is romantic, what is he trying to say? He is trying to say that a romantic man is a person who is a visionary. He is trying to say that a uh, romantic man is a person who is an idealist. He is trying to say in simple layman's terms that a romantic man is a person who is a dreamer. Reality may be very different, but the romantic man is looking at something very different. So first, how do I interpret the topic? I am breaking it up into parts. Who is a scientific man? Who is a romantic man? Second, now I will have to raise this part. Second, question that I should ask, me, ask, ask myself is, the scientific man and the romantic man, how are they related to each other? Are they related? And if they are, how are they related to each other? And here now, based on what I have understood so far, I realize that the romantic man provides the vision. But, the scientific man provides the methods, the tools, the, the machinery, the equipment to achieve that vision. If I look at the scientific man and the romantic man, who is a, uh, who's a romantic man? The visionary. Who is the scientific man? The person who provides the tools. So does this mean that the two are separate? The answer is no. And here now, we understand that within every single one of us, there is a bit of a scientific person and there's a bit of a romanticist. The students who are preparing for this exam, are you people scientific or romantic? You are both. This exam is very demanding, fiercely competitive and extremely uncertain. 10 lakh people will fill, uh, fill the form for the prelims. 75 people will make it to the IAS. Just think about the numbers sometime. 75 up to 10 lakh. No matter how intelligent, how hardworking you are, 
you have to have that unshakable belief, that unshakable vision that no, no matter what, I will be able to clear this exam. That's the romantic part. Second part is the scientific part. That if you have to clear this exam, what do you need? Number one, I need to choose a good option. Number two, I need to figure out how to finish my GS course in time. Number three, I need to improve answer writing. Number four, I need a lot of facts in my head to be able to clear the prelims, very precise facts and so on. These tools, whether it is answer writing, whether it is memorizing, whether it is making acronyms, whatever it might be, that is what you call the tools. So when we say which of these two is more important, the answer is neither and that's the third part. Who is more important, the scientific man or the romantic man? Neither. They are two sides of the same coin. They are mutually supplementary. They are mutually complementary in nature. Without the vision, my knowledge and my tools is worth nothing. And without the tools, my vision is worth nothing because I will never be able to achieve it. I need a combination of the two. So if I am choosing a topic, first and foremost, I will interpret it correctly. I will take some time. How much time would I have taken with this? I think about 5 or 6 minutes. But here I am not doing it for myself. I am doing it publicly in front of you. So the first thing that I do is understand what the topic means. Number two, identify what, sorry, identify what are the different dimensions that are relevant to this topic. And when you are identifying these uh, dimensions, ensure that you have diversity in those dimensions. So far in, the, in this uh, small interaction that we've had, I've emphasized on two points. Number one, you must have ready-made, organized, good quality content. And number two, as far as possible, this content should be diverse. Now, a romantic and a, sub, uh, and a scientific man exist within each one of us. We have a vision, we have the tools and only when we have both can we achieve something worthwhile. But how do I explain this to a reader? How do I convey it in my essay? Now here, there are many different dimensions I can choose. For example, I choose the dimension of nation. I talk about a country. And which country? Of course, India here. Now, the person that I'm talking about is Mahatma Gandhi. What is his romantic vision? One night, Mahatma Gandhi, who is, in, who is a British educated lawyer, working as a barrister, wearing Western clothes, is traveling in South Africa when he is forcibly evicted from the train at Peter Marisburg. When Gandhi gets up from the platform, he realizes, and that's the romantic vision, that unless India attains independence, Indians will never have dignity and will never have basic fundamental rights. That's his vision. But this vision is worth nothing. I'm sure many people before him, after him, would have had a similar vision. That vision is worth nothing unless and until you have a scientific method. And what is the scientific method? Right then, he starts his social experiments in South Africa at Tolstoy Farm with Ahinsa and Satyagraha. And please note, we use the word social experiments. We don't say that this is a social, social example, a social activity, a social community. The word we use is social experimentation because he's trying to figure out what will work and how to refine these methods so that tomorrow the Indian masses can be channelized towards a common goal of attaining independence. This is why we say that within each man again, the history is not a set of victories won by the scientific man over the romantic man. It is a combination, it is an amalgamation of the two. If I take another dimension, I will take the dimension of commerce. Now in commerce, I talk about one of the wealthiest men in the world, which is Jeff Bezos. About what 20-25 years back, he had one small vision. He liked reading books and going to a bookstore, finding a book that he wanted was very difficult. You know, you go to a typical bookstore, you ask for some book that you really want. The owner will say that, no, we don't have it in stock. Please come back after a few days. I'll try to order it for you. So he said that it should be easy to, to find the book that you want to read. So what is he? That's the vision. And now, this what is the method? He now starts working on a platform where it becomes easy for you to store books in warehouses. Your operational costs, logistical costs reduce as the supplier. And for the customer, it's very easy to find any book. You, I'm sitting in Delhi. I order a book which is going to be delivered from a warehouse in Bangalore. But within three days, the book will be delivered here in a good condition and at an economical cost. Without both of them working simultaneously, you cannot achieve that objective. Another dimension if I add, I would add the historical dimension. Yes, students say where do we get content from? One thing that I always tell the students in the essay classes is this man's name, Oscar Schindler. 
it is difficult to find an essay where you cannot use Oscar Schindler's example. And for those of you who don't know about him, who's he? He was a person living in Germany who joined the Nazi party during the Second World War, earned a lot of money, earned a lot of money by taking over the businesses of Jews in Germany who were going bankrupt or who were being killed by the Nazis. But very soon he realized that what was happening in Germany was inhuman. He could not tolerate it anymore. So here what does he do? Here now what he does, sir, 180 candidates join the IS. Correct, I was talking about the general category. My dear friend, let, let's focus more on this. Now, what, do, what does he do? He starts hiring more and more Jews. He has one dream, one vision to save Jews from extermination, to save them from concentration camps, from gas chambers. And what scientific method does he use? Simple method that he uses is, is that he starts employing Jews in his factory tells the Nazis that this Jew is very important, even if this person is a Jew, is, is very important for me because otherwise my business will not run and of course Germany will not get the revenue that we want. He starts employing them, provides them the basic necessities and prevents their deportation to concentration camps. Without the tool and without the romantic vision, again, achieving that objective is literally impossible. If you look at the personal, uh, at a personal level, one of the most famous sports persons in the world is a person called Messi. I don't think he needs any introduction. Now, Messi, when he was a small child, had one vision and again, let's say romantic vision that I want to become a world famous footballer. Only problem was he was not growing. He, compared to children his age, he was, he was not, he did not have the height, he did not have the build. He was not growing at the right, uh, at the right pace. So what does uh, Lionel Messi do? The method that he uses is number one, growth hormones. And that of course is science or medicine. And number two, he has rigid discipline in his daily exercise and in his diet. Now this enables him to again become one of the most famous footballers the world has ever seen, proving again that history is a set of victories where the romantic vision and the scientific method, the romantic and the scientific man work hand in hand. Now these are four dimensions. If you want more dimensions, there are many more that we can add. If I look at technology, about 30, maybe 35 years back, Bill Gates had one romantic vision. There should be a personal computer in every house. Surprisingly, that time we called it personal computers. Today, we call them computers, tablets, laptops. You don't want to talk about Bill Gates, you take a look at Steve Jobs. I don't think Steve Jobs would have imagined when he made the first iPhone that using his platform within 10 to 15 years, a small business owner in India, a vegetable vendor in India would be able to accept online payments from people around him. That a person could go buy vegetables worth let's say 32 rupees and pay precisely 32 rupees using his platform. Romantic vision for Bill Gates for example was a computer in every house. What tool do you use? You, he started working on an operating system that was easy to use and that is what we remember as MS-DOS. Without which this dream, this vision would have never become a reality. If I look at gender, very what should I say, a very inspirational woman is a person called Chanda Zaveri. Chanda Zaveri, she had one simple dream that I want to attain financial and personal independence. She was a girl, I would say, living in Calcutta, about 18, 19 years of age. Her parents wanted her to get married. She was from a very wealthy family. She had a romantic vision that no, marriage might come later, but first I have to establish myself financially and I need to gain independence. What did she do? She sold off her earrings, the earrings she was wearing, took a flight, landed in the US, completed her education, attended Harvard, worked with a Nobel Prize, two-time Nobel Prize winner called Linus Pauling. And from there developed, based on the learnings that she, uh, that she had, she developed her own uh, cosmetic venture. And if I remember correctly, I think a company today is worth about $800 million. I'm not sure about the exact figure, but I think roughly about $800 million. The examples will keep going on. Dasharat Manji cutting, I think he's very famous, cutting a road through the mountain and the tool that he used was relentless labor. Nobody is going to help me. You don't have the mach uh, machines. But the only thing that you have, the one thing that you can use is your own labor. Abraham Lincoln, abolition of slavery is what he wanted. How did he achieve that? Through the Emancipation Proclamation, which nobody was able to counter. This essay topic is not important. The content given over here is not important because the content will go on endlessly. More important is the same part over here. Now let me take you back because now I think you'll understand it better. If you want to write a good essay, five things that you need to do. Number one, 
interpret the to uh, interpret the topic carefully and correctly number 2 to write a good essay identify what are the important dimensions perspectives that you can introduce here number 3 in these perspectives ensure diversity one can talk about technology one can talk about history one can talk about women you should have different dimensions don't repeat the same thing again otherwise the essay becomes very monotonous number 4 address the topic reinforce the topic repeatedly the more you can reinforce the topic the more substance the more impact your essay creates and number 5 select good examples now this is the question that students were asking me earlier and the same thing these examples that are written here is even one of them difficult every single student i don't know lionel messi honestly i don't watch football but i'm sure there are students who can tell me statistics down to the last goal everyone knows him but can you use him over here that is what matters if we take a look at mahatma gandhi for example everyone knows what happened to him everyone knows about tolstoy farm but will you remember it and how will you remember it not because you have content or because you've read something you will remember it when that content is in front of you with you in a simple and organized manner that is why we say that it's very simple but provided you can use it when it is needed that's the first thing i want you to understand second thing i need you to understand is even more important and again the next 2 minutes please listen to me carefully when you develop content that word somehow is not on the slides when you develop the right content it takes a lot of work but please remember once you've collected content once you've organized your content in the right manner the same content can be used very easily in many other essays and many other topics also and not only can it be used in other topics it can be used in other topics with very little change or with very little modification to understand what that means and that's why i'm saying that you'll have to you know you have to have faith in your in your studies once you study something well it will help you in many other areas to do that let me take a let me remove this let me take another topic which had come i don't know 2021 or 22 the topic was what we were saying earlier the real is rational and the rational is real now if you look at this topic given here history is a set of victories and if you look at this one real is rational they seem to be vastly different but if you look at them a little more carefully you realize that the essence is the same what is something that is real something that is real is not only something that exists it is also something that is imagined something that is imagined how can that be real because it is our imagination our faith our belief that gives form to it that makes it real for us one second what is something that is rational rational is something again that is based on logic that is based on that is based on empirical evidence that is based on that is based on rationality and so on anything that is real has to be rational has to be logical and whatever is logical will find a manifestation will actually transform into reality that's your simple understanding now if i want to write this essay down real is rational rational is real what do i write if i start looking at the content from here mahatma gandhi what was real for him the fact that sometime or the other india would i will not say romantic vision over here i will say real the fact that india can gain uh, gain independence and what is the rationality over here that you just need to use some methods use those methods it will take time it will take patience there will be sacrifices to make gandhi will come to india in 1915 but you will have to suffer jallianwala bag you will have to suffer chori chora you will have to suffer the withdrawal of the non cooperation movement and then after 32 years you will finally gain independence the real becomes rational and the rational becomes real same you can use for commerce for jeff bezos he has this perception that one day or the other e-commerce will become a way of the world 20 years back i don't think people would have been comfortable would have even thought that you can order everything from a bulb to a sewing machine to a toothpaste to a book to a laptop to anything that you want a television for your house sitting in the comfort of your house delivered free of cost at a cheap price in your homes the real is rational the, the same set of examples with minor changes in your language to address the topic and another essay takes shape that is why we say that as far as possible 
प्लीज इंश्योर दैट यू डिवेलप गुड कंटेंट एंड डाइवर्स कंटेंट वंस यू हैव दैट द एस ए विल बिकम वेरी ईजी टू राइट बिफोर आई मूव टू अनदर वन लेट मी इनफैक्ट टेक लुक एट सम क्वेश्चन दैट दीज पीपल आर पुटिंग अप योर कैन वी गिव एन ऑपोजिट ओपिनियन टू द टॉपिक लाइक दिस टॉपिक से साइंटिफिक मैन वन ओवर रोमांटिक मैन कैन वी राइट इट्स विक्ट्री ऑफ बोथ बट नॉट वन इन एथिक्स वेन स्टूडेंट से हाउ डू आई नो वॉट इज राइट और रॉन्ग आई टेल दम टू थिंग्स नंबर वन वॉट एवर यू बिलीव इज राइट और रॉन्ग शुड बी अलाइंड विद द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड नंबर टू विद द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ पब्लिक वेलफेयर इफ योर आंसर इज नॉट वायोलेटिंग द स्पिरिट ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इफ योर आंसर प्रोमोट्स पब्लिक वेलफेयर वील से दैट योर इंटरप्रिटेशन इज करेक्ट सिमिलरली इन दी एस ए कैन आई हैव अ स्लाइटली डाइवर्जेंट अ स्लाइटली डिफरेंट इंटरप्रिटेशन प्रेफरेबली नॉट If you were sitting with me for a discussion and you wanted to, you know, discuss different dimensions, I would say, say whatever comes to your mind. Be as argumentative as you want. Be as divergent as you want. As radical as you want. Why? Because that is opening your mind. Problem is that this is an exam. I get one chance to write that exam after one and a half to two years of very hard work. So over there, please keep these opinions on the side. For the exam, what would I say? That you please choose an opinion that can be considered a generalization, where when you're interpreting the topic in a manner, most of the people will agree with what you're saying. There will be exceptions, but the exception is not our concern here. As a civil servant, you don't look at the five people in a crowd of hundred who don't agree with you or who criticize you. You look at the ninety-five that you're here to serve. So when you're interpreting, preferably don't. you know use a divergent or a radical interpretation as far as possible a generalization which most people will agree with all right and i think that's the same question you asking can we use political and so societal dimension in these essays yes see i am saying this is a dimension for example i am saying this is techno technological another person will say sir this can be digital also i will give the example of steve jobs another person can say that sir this could be automotive also i'll take the example what is his name elon musk i can give his example another will say that sir can the dimension be based on innovation by talking about nikola tesla that is fine the name of the dimension is not important but if let's say there are four examples or four dimensions given over here more important the point is these four dimensions are different here i am talking about a man from the state of bihar here i am talking about a us president who is how many years back now 1850 was that's about 160 170 years back Here I'm talking about a woman from Calcutta who still alive, who still working with a uh, with a net worth of about 800 crores, 800 million. And here I'm talking about a person who is one of the leading, foremost pioneers of digitization in the world, of technology in the world, computers in the world. So there are multiple perspectives. As long as you have diversity, you are or you are on fine ground. All right. So the dimension is not important. Diverse. First, it should be relevant to the topic, and second, there should be diversity. That should be your concern. Oh, so actually, my doubt was the topic given in the question itself says that scientific man won the romantic man. Yes, the scientific man history is a set of a series, but when we say it as a series of victories, does that mean we always have to agree with the topic? Answer is no. Again, I don't remember the year, but a few years back, three, four, five years back, there's a topic uh, given by the UPSC which said that the fulfillment of the new woman in india is a myth the fulfillment of a new woman of the new woman in india is a myth will you agree with this topic certainly not you will say that the fulfillment of the new woman is not a myth because if you compare a girl living in india in 2023 with a mother's uh, generation and with a grandmother's generation with every successive generation you will see significant improvements not even changes improvements in how they approach education how they approach nutrition how they approach banking how they approach working and so on in every aspect but at the same time there is still a lot that we need to do someone earlier i don't know what that question was i said don't criticize yes someone was saying can we mention political dimensions i said yes you can but please don't criticize similarly over here we'll say that we've done a lot but a lot more needs to be done so this is not a topic that i will agree with similarly this topic given on on top i don't have to say that the scientific man always wins because i know that any great scientist here for a moment to simplify it for you just use the word inventor just use the word innovator or vision whatever you want 
if i look at a person like leonardo da vinci da vinci had a vision but that vision wouldn't have worked he's a genius because he also had the methods the two worked in tandem worked together simultaneously if you look at a person like galileo galileo had a romantic vision what is a vision that the that the world around us the universe around us is not geocentric it is heliocentric but he also had the vision i am not very good at science but i'm sure if i remember correctly i think he was the person who invented one of the most one of the first telescopes through which we could look at the world correct so you don't have to necessarily think about that uh, agree with the topic please interpret it correctly that's your first and your most important task anyone else okay fine let me take one more topic here just in case you people haven't understood some part over here just in case you people have doubts let me take one more part over here and again three things that that we are focusing on number 1 interpret the topic correctly number 2 you should have good content relevant content and number 3 there should be diversity in your content different dimensions now uh, another topic that was asked i don't remember last year or maybe last to last year the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world now someone had again asked how do i understand the topic correctly break it up first thing that i will ask myself is the hand that rocks the cradle what does this mean yes now here some students also say sir what do you mean by cradle and if i don't know the meaning of the word cradle what should i do then this is a topic you should not attempt it's as simple as that last couple of years <clears throat> you know students always say that sir sometimes when you are talking in class sometimes when you give us some notes when you are you know discussing with us on an online platform you sometimes use difficult words if i don't understand that word what should i do please learn i am here to teach you are here to learn if you coming across a new word learn because if you don't learn then in 2021 when you go for the essay paper the upsc will use words such as chimera and if you don't know what chimera is that topic you will not be able to attempt see again someone is saying that sir a word can have multiple meanings correct but in a particular context i think the meaning that is relevant that is applicable becomes very easy to identify when what is a cradle by the way for those who are not sure cradle is that what should i call it a small cot you know the small sort of a box that you make where you put a small child now first question that my that i ask myself is who is the hand that rocks the cradle most commonly who rocks the cradle or who takes care of a child now this could be a parent please note i am not using the word mother many people say hand that rocks the cradle who takes care of the child the mother absolutely not that's very outdated and very regressive thinking why is it always the woman's work to care to take care of the child if the woman is working if the mother is working should the father not take care of the child if the mother is not well should the father not take care of the child if the mother is busy with some in doing something should the father not take care of the child and even otherwise in everyday living should they not divide the responsibilities between themselves so it is not it is not about uh, what should i say it's not about father or mother more importantly use a slightly better word parenting all right one second who else rocks the cradle now parent is related to your child that's the correlation but who rocks the cradle uh, which hand rocks the cradle i can number two the relation that you and i have i can say this is a teacher and this is a student but now this part you will start understanding when you also understand the second part when we say rules the world what does that mean that means that you prepare this child that means that you prepare the student in a manner that they can contribute positively to the world rule the world does not mean domination rule the world i can give you an example here of alexander uh alexander was alexander the great from macedonia he was raised in such a manner that he became one of the most famous conquerors in the world but we are not talking about that here we are talking in a democracy we are talking in a welfare state we are writing the essay for the civil services exam so here we will say in a manner that you can contribute positively to the world now if i want to if i want to educate if i want to groom mentor train teach uh, what should i say raise someone to rule the world who can that be parent to a child teacher to the, to the student number 3 i can also say that this can be the government in any country in any state and who is in the cradle that could be your citizens that could be the people over here 
नंबर फोर आई कैन से दैट दिस कैन बी अ मल्टीनेशनल और मल्टीलैटरल इंस्टीट्यूशन वॉट इज अ मल्टीलैटरल इंस्टीट्यूशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस कू बी द डब्ल्यू एच ओ एंड हु आर यू गवर्निंग यू आर गवर्निंग एंड यूर रेजिंग योर ग्रूमिंग योर टेकिंग केयर ऑफ एंटायर नेशन ड्यूरिंग द कोविड पैंडमिक वन वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट फिंगर्स ऑफ एक्यूजेशन पॉइंटेड टूवर्ड्स द डब्ल्यू एच ओ दैट दे फेल्ड इन द लीडरशिप रोल दे वर नॉट एबल टू कंटेन द एडवर्स इम्पैक्ट ऑफ द पैंडमिक यू कैन टॉक अबाउट डिप्लोमेसी हो या नो दिस कूड बी द यू एस फॉर एग्जाम्पल बींग वर्ल्ड लीडर्स यू सपोज टू यू नो यू सपोज टू सेट द राइट स्टैंडर्ड्स फॉर अदर्स टू फॉलो एंड सो वन एंड सो फोर्थ सो फर्स्ट इंटरप्रेट द टॉपिक करेक्टली हु इज द हैंड दैट रॉक्स द क्रेडल एनी पर्सन दैट इज प्रोवाइडिंग नर्चरिंग दैट इज प्रोवाइडिंग एजुकेशन ग्रूमिंग एंड सो वन नंबर टू हाउ डू यू डू यू रॉक द क्रेडल माई एनेबलिंग द इंडिविजुअल द स्टूडेंट द नेशन टू टू बिकम बेटर एंड हाउ डू यू रूल द द वर्ल्ड बाई टमोरो हैविंग एन इम्पैक्ट और डूइंग एक्शन दैट हैव एन इम्पैक्ट अपॉन द एंटायर वर्ल्ड नाउ दैट इज दिस पार्ट ओवर हेयर सेकेंड देन एड्रेस द टॉपिक फ्रॉम मल्टीपल एंड डिफरेंट डायमेंशंस नाउ विच डायमेंशंस कैन आई चूज ओवर हेयर आई जस्ट वेन आई एम ब्रेन सॉमिंग एंड ब्रेक इट अप फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई विल स्टार्ट विद पेरेंटिंग इन पेरेंटिंग हु लॉक्स द क्रेडल द मदर ऑफ द फादर who is in the cradle children what i was just explaining to you now how exactly do you give uh, how do you rule, uh, uh, rule the world by giving birth to and by raising confident self reliant children and here the example someone by some coincidence someone is saying can we give the example of einstein example i would, was giving here was another inventor called thomas uh, edison edison apparently was in school his school told his mother that your child is mentally deficient we will not be able to teach him Edison's mother they sent her a letter Edison asked his mother what is written in the letter his mother told him that this letter is saying that you are so gifted you are so intelligent that your school teachers cannot teach you anymore therefore i will have to teach you at home myself Edison says that many years later many years later i saw that letter and that's when i realized what my mother had done for me because the hand that rocks the cradle who and he's of course one of the greatest inventors the world has ever seen Similarly, I can talk about mentoring. Who mentors you? This could be your friend. This could be your cousin. This could be your brother or sister. And who's in the cradle? Who are you mentoring or who are you teaching? Your friends or your siblings? When we have now, how does this uh, how does this uh, rule the world? Because we dispel doubts. Any doubts that you have, any confusion that you have, clarity that you need, confirmation that you need, we provide that. What example will you give over here? And like I said earlier, quality of examples matters. So here, talk about Krishna and Arjun just before the battle starts in Mahabharat. i can talk about education another dimension in education i can talk about teachers and who's in the cradle who's the who's the kid supposed to symbolize that's your students how do you enable them to rule the world by giving them knowledge but also giving them contentment most students in india if they have one major problem i'm not talking about you people i'm talking about people in school it is the what should i call it the tremendous pressure and the terrible fear especially of board examinations somewhere in class 9th students start getting worried teachers start telling them that next year your boards are coming up you should be better you should study better and all that now how do you ensure that they are knowledgeable but they also have contentment that they are also happy states in india starting with delhi i think up also now has what is called the happiness curriculum enabling children to become better human beings happier human beings in the future another dimension we can choose on a global level what i was saying earlier also uh, institutions multilateral institutions and who is in the cradle now nations different countries and here what do you do resolve common issues that are of interest and concern to everyone and the example that you can give is the who during covid you can talk about united nations in everyday lives i mean everyday affairs now these are some dimensions you want to add more example will go on endlessly but if i want on a humanitarian level uh, who rocks the cradle compassionate people towards whom people who are needy how by promoting social justice example you can give mother teresa after that technological level who rocks the cradle scientists who are they who are they helping or who are they benefiting not one or two people entire mankind how do you rule the world by improving or benefiting human existence here for example right brothers now right brothers can i use in the previous uh, topic romantic and uh, scientific man yes romantic vision that man can fly scientific methods that you have to figure out how exactly to devise a machine which can take off despite gravity working against it spiritual damage 
see you can use any dimension that you want the point that i'm trying to make over here is again number 1 please understand the topic correctly number 2 give different perspectives different dimensions where there is diversity and number 3 i will not even go forward this is very easy to this is nothing to explain uh once you understand the topic once you have and this will come when you have content available to you if you do not i do not don't think what is that someone will later ask me what is sba what is bbbp sba swachh bharat abhiyan that is beti bachao beti padhao whose responsibility is that the government towards whom your citizens what, how do you rule the world nation building better your people better your citizens better your human capital higher the chances that you can become a global leader all right so once you interpret the topic correctly after that and once you have the content choosing the content from that collection that you got becomes very easy and because this is just one interaction that i have with you and i'm not really sure when exactly we we'll, you know i don't know what exactly you're doing how you're preparing so one more time let me briefly uh, reinforce and now you'll understand this better number one please prepare easy to use content that is organized and that is based on certain themes so that depending upon the theme again historical technological economic political women you will be able to get it out extract it from there easily number 2 please develop time management write regularly and number 3 if you are writing your mains especially improve your writing abilities through assessment <coughs> and identifying where you are doing something wrong and how you can further improve all right let me again take a look at a couple of questions so how many essays should i write i'm preparing in this means some teachers are suggesting to write two or three per month see if you are writing your mains this year it also depends upon your level of preparation for the other subjects for example how well prepared are you in your optional what is your syllabus coverage for your gs papers if you are comfortably placed then i would say that you can afford to write maybe two essays every week if on the other hand you are still there's a lot of work re uh, required in your optional in your gen gen studies paper even then i would say at least one essay per week because it is i before i came for this interaction i met this one student who was an essay student here last year he said that sir i have attended the classes i'm comfortable with the content and all how frequently sh should i practice and i just told him one every week you write one essay every week that will be more than it will just help you revise your content and get into that practice of writing how do you think how do you brainstorm and how do you write right so i think about one in a week would be enough how many dimensions should we go sir three or four yes someone earlier was asking not only how many dimensions someone was asking how many paragraph should be right there should be at least <coughs> five distinct and separate paragraphs through which you show or through which you discuss different dimensions and different perspectives at least five if you can write more than that good but remember there's a word limit of 1200 words so you know don't go too for too much don't write one essay so well that you have no time or very little time left for the second one oh uh, okay so how to collect example for essays again like i had said earlier also either please put in your own work or if you're not putting in your if you're not able to put in that much work then please get what should i say <clears throat> then please get access to an essay course it's a 250 mark paper it's again i feel very awkward saying things like this but i think it will really be beneficial for you all right so can we write the essay in points no please write in flowing paragraphs absolutely not not in the form can you use a uh, can you use diagrams what someone was asking me can we use subheadings no can we use diagrams no can we make flow charts no can i write in points or bullet points no absolutely not so if i'm giving the paper next year then how many essays uh, how regularly should i write then write once in every two weeks or so then you first please focus more on developing content because without content your essays will be really low in standard in quality right and briefly also let me especially i would say over here i would be focusing on students who are writing their mains this year common question students ask is when should i start preparing for essay simple answer that i give is in what some student here had written someone said when should we start writing immediate next answer someone had written was today similarly i would say if you are a serious candidate for this exam ideally you should start as early as possible provided you have the time and here at vajiram we started one batch we started recently on 11 june uh, which was just last sunday another one we are starting on the 21st of june 
classes will be held twice a week <coughs> on Sundays and on Wednesdays at 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, this module here at Vajiram, there will be a total of 12 classes which cover 8 themes. Uh, themes such as gender, media, healthcare, international relations, writing ability, how do you improve your expression, how do you, you know, uh, organize the content, select the right content, reflective essays, abstract essays and so on. In every class over here, like I said earlier, students have that common question, how do I start writing? It's very important that they feel confident to write the first sentence. So here inside the class, what I make them do, which is compulsory for them, is that they, their small assignments that we take up, they have to write inside the class. And I have noticed that after about what, after about two or three classes, their hesitation goes away. Their, what should I say, their, their ability or their fear that God knows what I will write, how the language should be, that completely goes away. All right. Third, uh, in every class, there will be handouts given to you. Each handout will be roughly about 20 pages. So, about uh, across 8-9 themes, 8-9 classes that we'll have separately over here, that will be somewhere between 150 to 200 pages which should be more than enough for you for any content that you might need for the next two or three years. Simultaneously, there will be four full-length tests which are included in this paper, detailed discussions after the test, evaluation of uh, your test papers and a template will be given of the model answers. Uh, mode of discussion is or mode of attending is online as well as offline. If you're in Delhi, you can attend offline. If you're not in Delhi, you can attend online. Similarly, the tests also that you want to submit, your scripts, they can be submitted online as well as offline. All right, and who's taking <coughs> the faculty who's teaching that, that that I'm teaching? That's why I'm great people. I've discussed the entire part over here, so I'm the person who'll be taking the essay part over here. Uh, I'm preparing for next year. I'm not very good in English. How should I approach the essay? Please start collecting content. Honestly, start with that, and like I said earlier, start writing every now and then. All right. Uh, can you upload this class PDF in description? I am not really sure. I'll ask them. If it is possible, I'll try to get it done. I'm not sure if that's possible. All right. All right. Any other questions over here? I think the questions are done. All right. Then I think this is where we'll, uh, where we'll say bye. Thank you very much. Wish you all the very best. And if you're preparing for the mains, I wish you even more good luck. I hope you do very well. Thank you.